this way. It's been a long time since I've ever written to you. So many things to say, so many things I want to say, but I can't find the words yet. So please know that I'm thinking of you and, of course, of Laura. I hear from little Mike every day. He told me about Patty being mugged on the waterfront. Why would anyone want to hurt Patty Kelly? I called Joe as soon as I found out about it, and I'm writing to Rose. She's a lovely person and doesn't deserve this kind of grief. I've bought a lot of things for the waterfront clinic from secondhand hospital supply stores. Do I dare ask you to consider coming to work at the clinic when I come home? Do I have a right to ask that of you? Leslie, oh, what are you doing? It's the crack of dawn. Amy, you don't have to whisper. We're both up. Oh, right. Must be the hour. Well, I just I couldn't sleep. Just so worried about Laura. Bobby. Good morning. Goodness sakes, what's wrong? I'm sorry, Jesse. I didn't mean to wake you up. But I haven't been sleeping very well lately. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Well, you know, I wake up about 2 or 3 in the morning, and then I read a little bit, and then I come out here and I pace. Why haven't you told me? Well, there didn't seem to be much point. There's not a whole lot you could do about it. Well, now I could have worried a little bit. And that's exactly what I didn't want. Oh, whatever's bothering you, is there some way I can help? It's Luke. I keep having this terrible premonition, and I can't shake it. What kind of a premonition? It's a feeling that I have, that I'm never going to see him again alive. that's all. For some reason, I'm being kept in the dark where my sister is concerned. It's not right. I want to know what's going on. Amy, I have been told certain things by the police, but I've also been told that they're in confidence, and I'm not to repeat them to anyone. Well, I still don't believe the last story that I read in the newspaper about Luke kidnapping Laura. I know, as well as I know anything, that she went with him of her own free will, and wherever they are right now, she's staying with them the same way. Yes, I think you're probably very right. I don't think there was ever any force. What do the police think? Oh, with the police, anything is possible. I suppose that's what I think, too. Anything is possible. Including some rather terrible things. And that's what frightens me so much. That something horrible could be happening to them right now. And we wouldn't have any way of knowing. Sit down and have coffee with me, would you? I'd like to talk to you. What is it? Well, there are some things I'd like to put together, and I need your help. Good things. You see, I haven't been sleeping very well either recently, ever since the apartment was broken into and vandalized. I don't blame you. I've been very upset about that, too. Yeah. But do you realize we have never talked about it? Bobby, look, I'm not blind. Last year, Roy DeLock Luca was shot and killed when he tried to kill Mitch the night of the election. Now, I don't happen to think that that was an act of revenge on the part of a young man who thought Mitch had something to do with his cousin's death in jail. I think it went a lot further than that, didn't it? Jesse, you want me to move out of the apartment? I mean, I could go and I could move in with Ruby, you know? And I've been thinking that maybe I just ought to go back to Elm Street. I don't want to bring any more trouble to you. You don't have to worry about that. That isn't why I said what I did. 
What I'm asking you to do is not to hide from people who care about you when you're in trouble. Honey, all I want to do is help you. I know, Jesse. Thank you. But I think I'm going to have to think this through all by myself. Well, all right, if that's what you need to do, I'm not going to crowd you, but uh, if I can help, all you have to do is say something. I know. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Well, uh, now that I'm up, I think I'll go get my shower and start the day. Listen, I'm calling to find out how Patty Kelly's doing. He's stable, but he's so terribly weak. How's the temp? No rise, and that's good. At least, listen, what are you doing up at the crack of dawn like this? Oh, I'm just thinking. Is, um, is Joe still in there with his dad? Yes, he is. Okay, would you do me a favor? Would you tell Joe not to leave and try to keep him at the hospital and, and to wait till I get there, even if he wants to go home real bad? Okay, but Joe's going to be awfully tired. No, but it's real important that I talk to him, okay? I gotta talk to him about Luke. Okay, I'll see that he gets the message. The longer I stay in this kind of work, the more my ulcer kicks up. Thank you, Mr. Calhoun. Oh, I've been called Pop so often around here, it kind of feels funny to be called Mr. Okay, Pop. I want to ask you a couple of more questions about that cute little black-haired waitress who worked here. Lucy, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she's sure going to be missed around here. I used to get an awful lot of questions about her. Yeah, they're going to miss her husband, too. They were two of the best workers I ever had. And it's funny how they just kind of drifted in here out of the blue that way, too. Yes, indeed. They just brightened this place up a whole lot. And it's funny, too, the way they just suddenly took off. Oh, well, you know how young folks are these days. They get restless staying in one place for any length of time. You like to have to go moving on. But I don't hold that against them. Now, what's Beecher Corners got to offer young folks anyhow? But they certainly didn't give you any notice. Well, I don't hold that against them. Morning, Pop. Well, morning, oh. Sheriff. Come, Ramsey. Morning, Sheriff. We've been waiting for you. Uh, gonna have breakfast, I hope. No, thanks. Just some coffee. Oh, all right. Well, did you get it? Oh, yeah. I got the picture right here. The two bullets I pulled out of the body we found in the cornfield. Hmm. I'd like to keep this, if I may. I'd like to run it through our ballistics division. Oh, help yourself. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. The big news is yet to come. What big news? Well, we were able to identify the man by his prints. He always used a knife. Three arrests, one conviction. An expert with a knife, huh? Well, the knife we found in the barn certainly supports that. Oh. Does the name Vic Gower mean anything to you? Gower, yes. Vic Gower, it certainly does. Well, thank you. If you excuse me, I have to make a very important phone call. Mrs. Taylor, I'm Captain Ramsey. I've been trying to reach Joe Kelly. They transferred me to you. Is he around? Uh, just a minute. I... No, I don't see Mr. Kelly around. Oh, wait a second. Rose Kelly is here. Would you like to speak with her? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that'll be fine. Hold on, please. I'll, I'll get... Uh, it's a telephone call for you. For me? I wonder who it could be. It's a man. He first wanted to talk to Joe Kelly, and then uh, he said he talked to you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Kelly, Bert Ramsey here. I was trying to locate Joe. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. He's in with his father right now. Oh, yes. How is he? Uh, your husband, I mean. He's very weak, I'm afraid. Um, can I give Joe a message? Well, I certainly would appreciate it if you would. Of course. Tell Joe that we've identified the body that we found in the cornfield. The fellow's name is Vic Gower. 
Now, we think it's possible that he's the man who knifed Patty. Cow is now dead, so if we're right, you don't have to worry about him going after Patty again or Joe either. Thank God. Now, that doesn't mean that you should release the guards at the hospital. It's possible someone else might be after Joe. So tell him to be very careful. Yes, I will. Now, do you happen to know if a telewire photo came in on this Vic Gower? Has Joe even mentioned it? No, he hasn't said anything to me. Well, it's on its way, and I have to have positive identification of Gower by Patty. All right, Captain. I'll make sure that Joe gets a message, and thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, you're very welcome. I just hope that your husband comes out of this all right. We're praying. Well, I'll be praying, too. Goodbye, Mrs. Kelly. Thank you. Goodbye. Rose, hi. Oh, hi, Bobby. How's Patty doing? Well, he made it through the night, and we're very thankful for that. And every other night that he gets through is going to be another hopeful sign. Oh, I hope you're right. Thanks for your encouragement. Listen, I got a few minutes before I have to go on duty, so what do you say to a cup of coffee? I don't think so, Bobby. I've got to talk to Joe. He's still in danger. <laughs> Great. I can always use an extra pair of pants. Come on back and I'll put you to work. Um, Diane, I want to talk with Leslie for a minute, okay? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Les, do you have a minute to talk? Yes, of course. Listen, we can't wait any longer, okay? We've got to do something to get Jennifer's dress. I know. I've really been trying. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to get it yet. Well, I'm going to go do it, even if it means I've got to break into Smith's house. Bobby, that would be a terrible thing to do. No, it wouldn't, because I was just thinking, if I can get into his den, I can go through all of his papers, and I may be able to find a return address or something that's going to tell us where she is. <sighs> Leslie, I get this feeling that Luke and Laura are in terrible danger, and Jennifer is the only way that we're going to get Smith to call off his hitman. I know, I know. We'll find an answer. We will. Believe me, I want it as much as you do. I know. Okay, I gotta get back to the desk. You let me know if you hear anything at all, okay? Yes, I will. Um, Diana, mm -hmm. did you get that message to Joe that I have to see him? Yes, I did. He was in intensive care still with his dad. Okay, thanks. I'll keep an eye out for him. Are things still the same with Patty? Yeah, pretty much. You want me to get that? No, it's okay. I'll do it. Excuse me. Tenth floor, Diana Taylor. Yes, Dr. Pirelli. No, I, that would not be a very good idea for you to stop by the hospital and see me right now. Because I'm just about to get off the night shift and I really have to get my sleep. All right. Goodbye. Dr. Pirelli. He wants to ask me some more questions about Heather. I gathered you didn't much want to see him. Well, I'm tired, you know? And talking about Heather is not exactly one of my favorite subjects. Yeah. I guess I have to bear in mind that I'm not the only one around this hospital with problems, huh? No, you aren't the only one with that distinction. And you're probably just as concerned about Heather's possible recovery as I am about Luke's whereabouts.